Hey guys, Dr. Dominic Sportelli here, board certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. I'm a medical doctor and I'm an associate program director for Prime Health Graduate Medical Education. Some of you may know that I do detoxification services at our medical hospital. We do detox for opiates, benzodiazepines, alcohol, among other things. And something that I really want to talk to you about today is alcohol withdrawal and how incredibly dangerous it is. But first, I think in order to understand alcohol withdrawal, we'll do kind of a part one here today. And I just want to teach you guys a little bit about how alcohol works in the brain and why withdrawal is so incredibly dangerous. In order to understand this, we're going to do a little bit of super basic neurology 101. You guys might remember this stuff from your biology and physiology classes. Um, bear with me and keep in mind, this is incredibly basic. There's a lot of nuance to this. Um, so we're literally going to do the one plus one equals two stuff here. You guys to see is my rudimentary drawing of a neuron. So you guys can see the neuron here. You have the cell body and you have the axon. These are the dendrites that receive information. But here's the kicker here. This is the most important point of what I'm about to show you guys. To communicate with another neuron, what it has to do is have an electrical potential travel down this axon. So in order for that to happen, this is the important point, in order for that to happen, it's called an action potential. Now, when you're looking at the cell body, what tends to happen is there's a gradient between the outside and the inside between positive and negative charges. And these positive and negative charges are based on ions, chloride, potassium, sodium, and calcium for the most part. But in order for this to fire, in order for this to go travel down that axon, send information this way, and propagate thoughts, movement, whatever that neuron is doing, it has to have a more positive charge inside that area, inside the cell body, and it's usually at what's called the axon hillock right here. Well, one of the ways that that happens is there are channels on this cell body membrane, and when there's an influx of positive ions, then what we're gonna do is we are going to create a positive charge inside, and once that positive charge reaches what's called a threshold, then you get an action potential, which is an electrical impulse that travels down this axon and creates further downstream effects. So that's the most important thing to understand before we even talk about how alcohol works in the brain. So now let's talk about that neuron, the cell body of that neuron, and how we talked about there's negative and positive charge, and when that inside of that cell body reaches a threshold, more of a positive charge, then it has an action potential, and the nervous system transmits energy and communication, basically. Here's that membrane. Now, along that membrane, we have lots of channels, all different types of channels, and we're not gonna get super specific here, but when we're talking about alcohol, we're talking about the fact that alcohol or ethanol binds to a GABA receptor. Now, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, stands for gamma amino butyric acid. Now, the GABA receptors, all that it means is, is that alcohol will bind to that GABA receptor and cause a change in those ions that can flow through that membrane. Here we go, super basic. GABA receptors have three different types, A, B, and C. Now, we think that alcohol binds to the GABA A receptor. Now, when alcohol binds to this GABA A receptor, guess what it does? It allows chloride, which is a negatively charged ion that's floating around here, into the cell. So if you create a negative charge inside that cell body, inside that axon hillock, guess what? You're not gonna get an action potential. It puts on the brakes of any nervous system transmission, any nervous system conduction. So remember, alcohol binds here, opens, up, opens this little doorway, this little channel, chloride flies in there, you get a negative charge inside, and now there's no action potential. Remember, in order for an action potential to take place, there has to be a net positive charge in here to a certain threshold for it to reach an action potential. When you drink alcohol, it's binding to these GABA receptors, chloride ions are flooding in there, creating a negative charge, and now you will not have a neuron firing. Your nerves won't fire. Now, depending on where they are in the central nervous system, the areas of the brain, they're inhibited. It's like putting the brakes on in those areas of your brain. If you do this in the prefrontal cortex, guess what? You're not gonna make great decisions because those neurons aren't firing. If it's in the vestibular system, you're gonna be dizzy. If it's in other areas of the brain, there are going to be effects, obviously. So you're basically putting the brakes on your brain when you drink 
alcohol by this mechanism. So when we get into alcohol withdrawal and alcohol detox, which is incredibly dangerous, um, we'll understand a little bit more what happens to the brain when you're putting the brakes on the brain, so to speak, for so many days, weeks, months, and why you have this excitatory circumstance that causes auditory hallucinations, visual hallucinations, hypersympathetic tone, meaning high blood pressure, increased heart rate, sweating, things like that, and then how we fix it. You guys just got a crash course in the neurology of how alcohol works in the central nervous system, how it binds to GABA receptors and inhibits that neuron from firing, that nerve cell from firing and conducting information. So now you know. Hopefully that made some sense and we'll dig into this a little bit further.